Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Breaker and welcome to phase two of my daily. Today I went ahead and skipped phase one because we're not going to have time for it. Today I decided to go ahead and take a replay from Drop.sc between two players, one of them by the name of I Love Bune and the other one by the name of Strinter N. Alright, so let's get a look and see how these players play. Hopefully I'm loading the correct one. Yes, I am. Okay. And I'm at the right screen right now. By the way, if you would so kindly, just go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I kind of do all this on a volunteer basis, but here we go. Spawning is our Terran in the lower left-hand corner. His name is... I love Bion. And let's see here. In the upper right-hand corner, his Protoss opponent in the blue trunks. His, he belongs to Echo Clan. His name is Strinter N. It looks like the map we're going to be on today is just going to be uh, Derelict Watcher, L or excuse me, Test Edition. I was actually about to say um, Star Station, but uh, luckily I'm not that stupid. I did stop myself, and so far we've got the makes of a normal game. I suppose, like, since I've decided to do things, like, how do I say this? Since I've decided to do things just a little bit more head straight, with face-to-face -face introductions, i.e. my webcam and so on and so forth. Um, I've just decided that uh, I'm just going to try and do things different from now on, try and get you guys more familiar with me as a caster, who I am, what I try to do, and so on and so forth. I am the caster that tries to capitalize on some of the most underinvested scenes in StarCraft 2. We're talking about the Chinese scene as well as the Taiwanese scene. Many people say that these two scenes are almost dead. I assure you guys, that kind of statement is absolutely bullshit. And I hope if... I love Bune and Strinter N. Find this video, they will understand what I mean by that. StarCraft 2 is a huge name game anywhere in China, as well as anywhere in the USA, really. Um, I mean, that's basically all I've got to say about it. It's you know, it's it's a globalizable game, really. It's the second most popular one on Twitch.tv. I do also want to highlight that um, this morning I was casting for an online event with two players in it that everybody and their mother in China loved. And what happened was uh, that event got 25,000 viewers. It's known as the WCG Wild Card Competition. And um, what happened was it was Jim versus Shi Guan. I think it goes without saying Jim ended up winning. A lot of people um, have been hopeful to see Jim play in WCSNA and so on and so forth. And he did kind of do well until he went up against Scarlet. Scarlet caught him off guard. Broodlords in game number one or game number two, I forget. I didn't actually watch the games because I was busy with work. But, um, here we go. Looks like we're gonna have Strinter in. Excuse me, I love Bjorn come in here and, uh, checking out his opponent. He knows there's a double gas now. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, wow. Okay. So this is basically all the information that Bjorn has on Strinter N right now. Double gases, Cybernetics Core, and a gateway. So this means that he could be expecting anything in terms of an opener. He could, but what about this? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Double Reaper opening, and he's gonna try and get a probe kill with two Reapers. Very few, very few players actually use this as an opener, but I've seen um, I seen one Russian Terran do it. I forget his name, but honestly, the I think uh, in order for someone to use it viably, they have to actually send the Reapers directly to the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, directly to his opponent's main or natural, and what, what completely throws me off about Bjorn is why he actually sent them into the main to deal with the probe, because honestly, there would have been Marines later and they simply would have dealt with the problem anyway, I believe. Now we have Pylon going down here. Stalkers take down one Reaper. There's two Stalkers and one Mothership. So it looks like it's not going to be our proposed Sentry opener, if you will. We already have a lot of Stalkers, so that tells me that perhaps we could end up seeing a Twilight Council. But of course, we have yet to see that Twilight Council specific tech go down just yet. Robotics facility. Okay, perhaps I said that wrong. And the natural... 
Just going up in a heartbeat. Another gateway being tacked on. And of course, behind this it looks like Bjorn is going to go with a 1-1-1 opener. It's actually quite classic. Um, I think Terran needs it to really put themselves, just to put themselves on even ground with their opponent. Sure they have mules, sure they have this, sure they have that, but they don't really have tier 2 tech with uh, AoE to it. I mean, once you think about it, Protoss, Protoss in uh, just about, I don't know, wait, 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 I think, I think High Templar would be tier 2 tech. No, tier 3 tech. I mean, it's possible to get them on 2 base, don't get me wrong. And I know just because you're on 2 base doesn't mean you're on tier 2 tech, that just means you have 2 bases on, 2 bases of income. <laughs> Honestly, uh... The main difference is, uh, you know, I mean, Protoss units, they, they basically ca capitalize on outdoing Terran units. But Terran units need to capitalize on outspeeding them and outgrinding them with things like, uh, you know, the C-14 Gauss Rifle. So on and so forth. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh boy. It looks like Strinter is not going to engage up that ramp. He doesn't want to make any mistakes because he knows that if his opponent just clicks, stim, and then A moves forward, he's gonna die. He's gonna lose all his stalkers. <laughs> okay. Behind this, both players just really macroing up, but uh, Strinter wanted to get a poke on his opponent, and find out what's going on. As far as I know, he hasn't actually seen what's up, but to me, this basically screams bio, even though we can't prove it just yet. I mean, just look at this. I mean, eh, never mind, that's enough. That's not enough reason. We have a triple or triple orbital command opener coming, but I mean, just look at how many marines there are. Look at the fact that there's widow mines, things like that. <laughs> uh, finally, something that's going to prove my theory, two more barracks are coming down for our red Terran. And he's going to be trying a medevac drop run by with a, you know, like, uh, it looks like two or three different widow mines inside of it. But there's already a photon cannon here, so if it if it doesn't just act as detection, it will act as what's the word I'm looking for. It will definitely be able to uh, take down a couple of widow mines, maybe. But one drops here. Probes get pulled. It looks like Stalker's going to have to deal with this. But down at the natural. Looks like these three widow mines might get something. Uh, one gets a stalker kill, another one gets a single pro kill, and that's about it. The rest of the widow mines are no longer in attacking range of the Nexus. Altogether, three probes have been lost this entire game. And essentially, from the widow mines, it's only been like one or two. Only two of them. Amazingly enough, to this point in the game, only two. I do have an observer here, I feel it's a little misplaced, honestly, considering it doesn't have any vision of what's going on here. And now we have High Templar entering the mix, what about, say, uh, Cyanic Storm? This, wait a minute, this Templar Archives is being chronoed, but nothing is being researched on it. So far we only have, wow, we have both players taking a long time to get their techs up. Like. Even to this point, we actually see that Strinter has not gotten his stim out. He's not... Well, he's getting his plus one armor. Plus one attack. But at the same time, Cyanic Storm is not anywhere near finishing. We actually had our Protoss basically throw down a Chrono Boost on that with nothing on it. That's actually... Uh, it, can, it can make a difference in pro-level games. I'm not sure what level these guys are actually should have seen if they were at least masters, GM, so on and so forth. But, um, you know, this marine coming up here making sure... Uh, he's basically... he knows that there's gonna be a third somewhere. But at the same time, he's gonna try and, uh, make sure there's not a fourth coming down up here. It would be better somehow for Protoss to take it closer to home. Closer to his main, I guess. <laughs> Okay, looks like we're just gonna have a bunch of bio balls, or a bunch of one huge bio ball moving out, and this is all gonna come down to the engagement, really. I think you know, there's almost no other way to say it. Medivac drop is gonna go out, and I think try and put a tap to the head of uh, Stritter N. Uh, 
But meanwhile, he's just building up all his forces here. Does he have a High Templar anywhere to deal with this? Maybe. That is a full energy medevac. That means if it takes a feedback, it will die. And it looks like somehow... Stritzer knows about that. And where's the feedback? Where's the feedback? Oh, it goes down just in time after two Marines drop. And I'm just a little curious. How exactly did he know that that medevac drop was going to be there? At the same time, we also have Hallucinated Phoenix hovering over here at the third. And... Wait a minute. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I see, I see. Alright, well that explains how he knew about the, the bottom two medevac drops, maybe. Alright, so here we go. Plus three, plus three, now going down for Strenter. Um, double upgrades for the win. They're going to make his units so much more meaty than they are for his opponents. And... If he can just use all that Chrono Boost on his forges, on his two forges here, that would be good. But at the same time, he's got to worry about getting units cranked out because his opponent's going to be coming straight at him. 160 out of 185 supply. High Templars are right there, but there are no ghosts in the mix for our Terran. So this is actually looking quite vital for Strinter. He's got to be extremely careful. <laughs> Uh, Raven Hunter Seeker Missile goes down, and it looks like it's going to hit a Zealot, a group of Zealots. And there's going to be some storms going down. Yes, they are quite beautiful, but at the same time, we don't have any more High Templar left over. We do have one or two Archons in the mix, but we just don't have the AoE from Stritzer and to deal with this just yet. Beautiful force fields, kind of separating off of the main armies, and the Zealots are kind of closing down on the rest of the armored forces here. The question is, where is everything else? I don't know, I think as time goes by, we're just going to see Stritzer in an increasingly worse position. He's now cranking out double Colossi. This is exactly why you need Colossi earlier on. One High Templar had a single storm left on it, and it looked like he got sniped just before anything else could happen. Now we, we have basically probes being pulled by Stritzer, and if he can't hold here, and it looks like the entire probe line's been decimated, then it's basically GG. There it is, Stritzer, and calls it out. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Breaker. I'll see you guys next time.